गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम स्टार्टिंग द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन सब्जेक्ट माइक्रो प्रोसेसर सब्जेक्ट कोड इज के सी एस फोर जीरो थ्री माई सेल्फ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर टुकुर गुप्ता फ्रॉम अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद सो टूडे इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस सीरीज एंड इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस वॉट इज माइक्रो प्रोसेसर सम इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट रिलेटेड टू दिस सब्जेक्ट related to microprocessor related to microcontroller so let's see this is the overall syllabus for the subject in first unit we will be studying microprocessor evolution and types microprocessor architecture operation of its components addressing modes interrupts data transfer schemes instruction and data flow timer and timing diagram interfacing devices so overall this first unit is very important because it will cover all the important topics related to any microprocessor in second unit we will be talking about 8085 microprocessor in particular all the related units to this microprocessor or the addressing modes instruction sets its operations the various operations performed by this microprocessor in third unit we will talk about 8086 microprocessor which is another microprocessor and in that we will talk about register organization bus interface unit execution unit memory addressing memory segmentation operating modes and so on in the fourth unit we will study about the assembly language programming based on any of these both uh, both microprocessor that is 8085 and 8086 it will cover all the instructions that is data transfer arithmetic logic branch operations looping counting indexing and so on in the last unit we will talk about the peripheral devices that is 82 8237 dma controller 8255 programmable peripheral interface 8253 or 8254 programmable timer or counter 8259 programmable interrupt controller 8251 usart and rs232c so these are the interfacing devices and we will uh, get to know that how we can interface all these devices with our microprocessor these are the books that the students can consult for this particular subject gaunkar the first one microprocessor architecture programming and applications with 8085 by gaunkar is a very famous book among students and it it is also easy to understand for 8086 you can consult dv hall that is microprocessor interfacing by dv hall so in the and uh, all other books are you can consult for uh, different different topics so these this is the set of books you can refer now if we are talking about this subject this is basically a part of a system and that system we talk uh, we uh, we call it a embedded system so when we when we talk about any system what does a system mean a system means a uh, a set of different components a set of different hardware which run according to certain set of rules yes so this is a system for example uh, our wrist watch is a system it is having dial it is having some numbers it is having a, a machine and it it uh, it the set of rules which defines a uh, wrist watch is that a bigger clock will tell something a smaller the bigger needle will tell a particular thing and the smaller needle will tell a particular uh, some other thing so in this way a uh, clock uh, a clock or we can say a wrist watch is a system now what is an embedded system when we talk about the embedded system embedded system is a combination of some hardware and a software so if we are talking about a microwave oven so it is a it is an embedded system in that the hardware it contains 
is basically a microprocessor or a microcontroller we can say and a set of peripherals like there is a timer, there are certain knobs, there are there is a clock, a system clock. So, in this way it is it is containing certain set of hardware and when we talk about the software that particular hardware is having a processor inside it and that processor runs according to certain rules that is according to the programming we are we have done for that particular embedded system that is for that particular item and here we are talking about the microwave oven. So, basically a microwave oven is the microprocessor or microcontroller based embedded system and in which it works according to certain rules that those are produced by programming. Yes. So, we, we do programming for a, for a system for a certain embedded system and according to that programming it performs its task. So, basically a microprocessor or microcontroller is a part of a bigger system or we can say is a part of embedded system and microprocessor is the heart of that system because it is containing processor. So, when we talk about the general purpose or the specific task, we are surrounded with many embedded products in our daily life largely depends on the proper functioning of these gadgets. Examples include television, radio, CD player of our living room, washing machine, microwave oven in our kitchen, card readers, access controllers, palm devices or handheld devices. So, all these are the examples of embedded systems. Now, general purpose task or a specific task, computer that we use to compose mails, create documents or analyze the database, it is known as the standard desktop computer. You all know, the computers serve many purposes and applications, yes, we can perform a variety of applications, a variety of purposes using our my uh, using our desktop yes so we need to install the relevant software to get the required processing facility so this is a general purpose device yes so our microprocessor uh, that is uh, uh, our uh, uh, desktop that is based on the microprocessor is a general purpose device but in contrast embedded controllers carry out a specific work for which they are designed. Theoretically, an embedded controller is a combination of a piece of microprocessor based hardware and the suitable software to undertake a specific task. So, uh, general purpose devices are based on the microprocessor, but when we are talking about the specific task, so it, it consists of the microcontroller because microcontroller is having the components which are useful in a particular task. So, when we talk about the microprocessor, it is a CPU that is built into a single VLSI chip. Okay? So, basically a microprocessor is what? It is a CPU that is central processing unit on a single chip. So, central processing unit will be comprising of what three components? register set, control unit and ALU. So, when the register set, control unit and ALU all together, these three parts, all together they are available on a single chip that is known as the microprocessor. It is a general purpose device and additional external circuitry are added to make it a computer, microcomputer. So, the microprocessor contains arithmetic and logic unit that is ALU instruction decoder and control unit, instruction register, program counter that is PC, clock circuit and reset circuit and registers. But the microprocessor has no on chip input output ports, timers and memory. So, we have to note that the microprocessor does not contain any input output ports on the chip, no timers and no memory. Only the components which are present, present on a microprocessor are that is its register set, ALU unit and control unit. 
So, all these three when together present on a single chip makes a microprocessor. For example, 8085 from Intel is an 8 bit microprocessor and 8086 or 8088 from Intel is are the 16 bit microprocessors. When we talk about the microcontroller, it is a highly integrated single chip which consists of on chip CPU, RAM, EEPROM or PROM or ROM, whatever memory we use for our application, input output ports, they can be serial and parallel, timers and interrupt controller. So, all these components when present on a single chip, yes. So, these form the microcontroller. For example, Intel 8051 is a 8 bit microcontroller and Intel 8096 is a 16 bit microcontroller. So, these are the per two perfect examples for microcontroller and we have to remember that the three components ALU register set and control unit when present on a single chip makes microprocessor. All these three together with the memory unit with the input output ports, they may be serial or parallel interrupt controller. All these when available on a single chip, they make a microcontroller. Now, we can understand this logic from the diagram here, microprocessor versus microcontroller. So, this is the block diagram of microprocessor, their ALU, accumulator, working registers, program counter, stack pointer, clock circuit and interrupt circuits. When these available on a single chip, they make a microprocessor. Now, all these together along with internal ROM, input output ports, so this internal RAM, all these makes the, when available on a single chip, this makes the microcontroller. So, this is the basic difference between the two. Theoretically, we can have the different points between uh, which uh, differentiates these two terms, microprocessor and microcontroller. Microprocessor contains ALU, general purpose registers, stack pointer, program counter, clock, timing circuit, interrupt circuit, we have already discussed. In addition, microcontroller contains the input output ports and memory units. Microprocessor has many instructions to move data between memory and CPU, but on the contra uh, contrast, the microcontroller, it has few instructions to move data between memory and CPU. Few bit handling instructions are present inside microprocessor, but microcontroller has many bit handling instructions. Moreover, less number of pins are multifunctional in case of microprocessor, but in case of microcontroller, more number of pins are multifunctional. Single memory map for data and code are present in case of microprocessor and separate memory map are available for data and code in most of the microcontrollers, yes. Access time for memory and input output are more in case of microprocessor, but less access time is available for built in memory and input output in microcontroller. Microprocessor based systems requires additional hardwares, it requires and on contrast microcontrollers requires less additional hardwares. More flexibility is present in the design of microprocessor and microcontroller is less flexible because it is designed for a particular application. Large number of instructions are available with flexible addressing modes in case of microprocessor and in micro in case of microcontroller limited number of instructions are present with few addressing modes. Now, these are certain very important terms that is RISC and CISC CPU architectures. RISC stands for reduced instruction set computer system and CISC uh, stands for complex instruction set computer system. So, the microcontrollers with the small instruction set are called the reduced instruction set machines that is RISC and those with the complex instruction sets are called the complex instruction set that is CISC computers. So, 8051 is an example of CISC machine, whereas microchip PIC 18F8 7X series is an example of RISC machine. So, what is the difference between these two? When we talk about the reduced instruction set computer, it means this particular microcontroller or microprocessor will be having those instructions which can perform small operations 
per instruction. But when we talk about the complex instruction set computer system, it means that particular microprocessor and or the microcontroller can handle complex instructions which can perform multiple small small operations per instruction. This is the difference. So, overall RISC instruction set takes one or two cycles, CISC takes multiple cycles. Only load and store instructions are used to store the memory. In addition, load and store instructions, memory access is possible with other instructions also. Instructions executed by hardware in case of RISC and in case of CISC, the very uh, instructions are executed by the micro program. Here is a fixed format instruction in case of RISC and here the format varies for various instructions. Few addressing modes are available in RISC, but different many addressing modes are available in case of CISC since this handles the complex instructions. Here the fewer instructions are available, but here complex instruction set is present. Most of them have the multi multiple register banks, single register bank is available in case of CISC. It is highly pipeline, it is less pipeline. Complexity is in the compiler and complexity is in the microprogram in case of CISC. So, this, uh, this is the basic difference and it depends which uh, microcontroller or microprocessor we are using in our application. Now, this is another very important concept that is Harvard and von Neumann CPU architectures. When we talk about the von Neumann architecture, it uses the single memory space for both the instructions and data. And in hardware, hardware architecture, it has separate program memory and data memory. In case of von Neumann, it is not possible to fetch the instruction code and data. Why? Because we are using the single memory. So, at one time the bus will be accessing or either the data or the program. But in case of hardware architecture, instruction code and data can be fetched simultaneously using the different buses. Now, execution of instruction takes more machine cycles since the uh, access of the data and the program is done one by one, not simultaneously. Here the execution of instruction takes less machine cycles. Von Neumann uses CISC architecture and Harvard uses RISC architecture. Instruction prefetching is the main feature in Von Neumann. Instruction parallelism is the main feature and that is why it increases the speed of the processing. Also known as the control flow or the control driven computers that is in case of Von Neumann and in case of Harvard data flow or the data driven computers is another name for this architecture. The von Neumann simplifies the chip design because of single memory space. Obviously, the uh, since the there is a common space for both the program and the data memory, so the chip designing becomes easier in case of von Neumann. In case of hardware, it is complex because there is a separate memory spaces for both the uh, code and the data. So, 8085, 86, these follows the von Neumann architecture. At general purpose microcontrollers or the special DSP chips follow the Harvard architecture. Another few important terms are uh, related to the computer uh, hardware and software are suppose we are calling a program. What is program and the software? A set of instructions written in a specific sequence for the computer to solve a specific task. This is known as the program. So, a set of instructions for performing a particular operation that is known as a program. And what is a software? It is a collection of such programs. The program is stored in the computer memory in the form of binary numbers is known as a machine instructions. Since we know that a computer system understands or the machine understands only the binary language. So, the program set is stored in the uh, machine or the R system in the form of binary number that is 0 and 1 and that instruction set is known as the machine instructions. The machine language program is called the object code. This is another term. An assembly language, what is assembly language? 
So, we can do the programming in the assembly language and what is assembly language? It is the English like words, a combination of English like words. So, it is a mnemonic representation of machine language. Machine language and assembly language are low level languages. These are not the high level languages like C, C plus Fortran. These are the low level languages and these are easily understood to the humans, but not to the machine. Machine language is another term. Assembly language program, the programmer enters is called the source code. So, whatever program we write for any system, for our embedded system, for our microcontroller or microprocessor, the, that is known as the source code. So, the uh, instruction set or the program written in the uh, mnemonics in the assembly language that is known as the source code. The source code that is assembly language is translated to the object code that is the machine language using assembler. So, assembler is a software that will convert our source code that is the mnemonics like instruction set into the object code that is the machine language and that is known as the assembler. Programs can be written in the high level languages such as C, C plus etc. also. High level language will be converted to the machine language using compiler or interpreter. So, just like there was an assembler for converting the assembly language into the machine language, we are having the compiler or the interpreter which will convert our high level language that is C, C plus, Fortran, these are the high level languages. So, the programs that are written in these languages, th those are converted into the binary language or we can say the machine language using compiler or interpreter. So, assembler converts assembly language program into machine language and the compiler or the interpreter converts high level language program into machine language. So, the compiler reads the entire program and translates into the object code and then it is executed by the processor. So, this is the role of compiler and what is the role of interpreter? Interpreter takes one statement of the high level language as input at a time and translate it into object code and then executes. So, compiler compiles the program in one go, but the interpreter compiles the program one statement at a time. So, this is the difference between interpreter and compiler. When we are talking about the number systems and their conversions, so basically there are few important terms that is the nibbles, a set of 4 bits is known as the nibbles. Yes, bit is 0 or 1. So, set of 4 bits is known as a nibble. Set of 8 bits is known as the byte. 8 bits is known as the byte. Set of 16 bits it is known as the word. And set of 32 bits is known as a double word. So, uh, please note this difference. Set of 4 bits is known as nibble. Set of 8 bits is known as byte. Set of 16 bits is the word and the set of 32 bits is double word. So, these are the basic terms which will you will encounter again and again while studying this number system, while studying the microprocessor, the conversions and all. So, what is a bit? It is a bit a single binary digit of value 1 or 0. Nibble is a group of 4 bits as I have told you like this is the example. Byte a group of 8 bits, this is the example. So, and or we can say a byte is made up of 2 nibbles, yes. So, when we are talking about the decimal to binary conversion, so how will you convert? You will keep on dividing the number by 2, this is the way giving a question with a remainder of 0 or 1. The process repeats until the final question is 1. So, suppose you want to find out the binary equivalent of 54, what you will do? 54 divided by 2, 27 is the question, remainder is 0. Again, you will divide this number again by 2, the remainder will be 1. So, you will, uh, you will continue note down the remainders. And final value is this. So, from down to up 110110. So, this is the way of obtaining the uh, decimal from any, uh, sorry, from binary number from any decimal number. So, this is the way. Now, express the decimal number 54 as a binary number using weighted values. Solution is this. This is another way. 
this is another way of dividing uh, of conversion using the weighted system. Again in this way you can convert all the numbers sky values or the numbers into the binaries. These are certain examples which I have included in my slides. Now to, to convert it into the hexadecimal what you will do? You will keep on dividing by 16. The similarly, uh, similar to the way we uh, converted this decimal number into binary, we can also convert this decimal into other number systems. So, that is all for the basic terms, basic definitions, the basics of microcontroller and microprocessor and in further slides we will talk about the microprocessors in particular. That is all for the day. Thank you.